Okay, uh, today I will be talking about uh, three aspects uh, related to handling data in an irresponsible manner. Specifically, I will talk about um, uh, ensuring that al algorithms are fair, they support diversity, and they are handling bias. Um, we live in a world where decisions are assisted and uh, sometimes even taken by systems and software, uh, which is driven by a large amount of data. So at the personal level, many of our decisions are uh, based on uh, uh, such systems, from really simple ones to important ones, for, from where to eat, uh, um, what movie to watch, um, for, to whom, whom to date, what are the news, uh, which job to take, uh, whom to follow, who to vote, which uh, school to attend. Uh, there are always some uh, uh, system, uh, some algorithm that we use uh, to help in making some decisions. And uh, this holds all, not only at a personal level, but also organizations are use uh, systems to assist them uh, or, or to take decisions uh, in terms of credit, housing, pricing of goods, uh, who to get admitted in a school, even in courts, uh, systems are used to help making uh, decisions. So uh, this uh, raises concerns re regarding how much can or we should or should we trust uh, such systems. For decades, uh, we have been uh, designing and evaluating uh, algorithms and systems, uh, looking at uh, issues such as efficiency, um, how fast they run in terms of response time, throughput, what is their memory foot footprint. Uh, more recently, uh, we, uh, get, we are getting concerned about energy consumption and also uh, effectiveness. Um, we measure relevance, accuracy, user satisfaction, but uh, what about responsibility? Um, we, we should turn our focus on other aspects of quality. Um, what does responsibility mean? We should somehow be able to um, evaluate the impact of our algorithms uh, to society. Uh, somehow we, we should be, be, um, be able to evaluate whether the output of an algorithm is, uh, is correct. Uh, correct in an ethical way because this is a very tough question and but let's see some first attempts to address this is, such issues so uh in uh, this talk i will touch about three views one is fairness um how we treat data uh, without discrimination a lack of bias uh, avoiding unjustified concentration on the particular aspect and diversity um, ensuring that all relevant aspects are represented. We also live in a connected world, and uh, we'll uh, talk briefly about how these issues man manifest themselves in social networks. Uh, a large part of this talk is based on an article I wrote uh, in, uh, for uh, the ACM Journal of Data and Information Quality. Uh, and also we had uh, a tutorial with uh, Kostas and uh, Yuria focuses on fairness in ranking and recommenders in this year DBT. We also uh, presented in ICD and we are preparing a survey article um, on, on the topic. So if you want to, to get more material uh, on these topics, you could uh, look at this. Uh, OK, so let's start uh, discussing fairness. Most of you probably uh, know uh, about about, about uh, work in fairness, for uh, what is algorithmic fairness? Um, most work on algorithmic fairness um, takes a view of lack of discrimination. So the results of an algorithm should not be influenced by attributes that are not relevant. And those attributes are often called protected or sensitive attributes and there are attributes like gender, religion, age, race. There are two basic views on fairness. One is individual fairness and the other one is group fairness. Individual-based uh, fairness is based on the premise that similar individuals 
should be treated similarly. Whereas group-based fairness uh, consider individuals divided in groups, for example, male, female, may, uh, and uh, um, requires that all groups should be treated similarly. In both cases, if we want somehow to make those definitions formal, to operationalize them, we need first to define what it means for two individuals to be fair or how to partition individual into groups. Let's call it input similarity. And the other is we need a formal definition of what equal treatment means. Let's call it output similarity. What is a fair output? But, um, this is a very difficult problem uh, from both a social and a technical perspective. And um, there, there has been a, a fundamental distinction between equality and equity. Equality means that we treat equally. For example, we give the same hard stool to the three girls in the picture. Equity, on the other hand, um, requires that we treat people according to their need, so that they are finally receiving the same amount. So for the shorter girl in the picture, we give, we give her three stools. So now everybody can see over the fence. Another uh, distinction about fair treatment is between desperate treatment and disparate impact. Disparate treatment refers to the often illegal practice of treating an entity differently based on the protected attribute. Whereas disparate impact um, consider cases where the output depends on the protected attribute, even if all entities are treated the same way. Um, this is um, um, in, 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 the, in the US, this is in some cases even illegal. And the first case was a power company that required a high degree diploma for a skill work. And this resulted in excluding applicants of color. General blindness that is hiding the value of the protected attribute does not always work. And the reason is because there are other attributes that are correlated with the protected ones. Uh, this is often called also redundant encoding. And an example is uh, the zip code. So there are areas, neighborhoods, where there are, the majority of their uh, residents are of color. So using a zip code uh, sometimes is equivalent to using uh, the protected attribute. And another, um, another issue when defining what is a fair output similarity, output similarity, is that this clearly depends on the algorithmic problem. So what does it mean to have a similar output for a classifier is different um, from, from for a recommender or when we consider clustering or when we consider ranking. Also, sometimes it, it also depends on, sometimes depends on the specific task. For example, uh, um, whether the classification is for school admission or a sentencing decision in court. So to summarize, defining what is a fair output is a very complicated problem with many different aspects. Next, I'm going to give some examples of how we can define individual fairness. One of the first definitions of individual fairness is based on distance. Um, so I say that we have uh, a set of individuals and um, uh, we ideally we should have some distance metric um, that um, somehow uh, det determines how similar these two users are. This distance should be task specific. So you, you may have two users that are um, similar when it uh, when it comes to getting admitted to a graduate school, but different when it comes to getting a loan. It also um, uh, ex should express the ground truth, what, to, um, what is uh, um, actually, uh, sim what does um, similarity means for the specific task, um, externally imposed or proposed, and uh, for um, transparency, this should be made public available. 
Of course, having this distance is a very complicated and, 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 and uh, sometimes unrealistic uh, assumption. Now, uh, if we have this distance-based um, um, definition between individual, uh, what, is, what can we say about similarity of outcome? If there is a problem here. Okay. Um, I think we cannot see very well the, the right part of the slide, right? A bit disturbed. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. anyway, I will try to describe it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about similarity of outcome. This depends on the algorithm. So um, in most of my slides, I will, uh, I will consider classifiers. So let's say we have a probabilistic classifier that maps individuals to probability uh, distributions. So to classify an individual, we choose uh, an outcome uh, according to some probability distribution. The idea is here is that the output should be similar, that is the probability distribution should be similar for similar individual. And the specific way to uh, express this using the Lipstick, uh, Lipstick uh, mapping, which is not very clear in the slides, but it basically says that the distance uh, between the two probability distributions uh, should be smaller than the distance between the, the individuals. Okay. Um, Yet another view of individual fairness is based on um, on counterfactual. Um, uh, um, it's called counterfactual fairness, and it's based on this simple uh, idea: um, a decision is fair towards an individual if it is the same in both the actual and the counterfactual world. Well, the individual belongs to a different group. Okay. Now I'm going to briefly talk about um, group uh, fairness. Ooh. Okay. Um, sorry for this. I don't know. Uh, this slide's a little bit uh, messed up, but I will try to explain it. Okay. So uh, for group fairness, it's important to define groups. Okay. So for simplicity, let's just assume that we have a binary protected tag attributes and we have two groups: the blue group and the red group. Blue is the non-protected group. Red is the protected minority group. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about classification and uh, try to present uh, some of the approaches that have been defined for defining fairness of output in classification for group fairness. Okay, so again, for simplicity, I will uh, assume a binary classifier. One is the positive class, um, so um, the class that leads to a favorable decision, say if the class um, uh, corresponds to getting the job. So on the right of the slides, you said you see the output of the classifier. So one red person got the job, uh, and uh, four uh, blue people uh, got the job. Okay. So now we want to find to to to, to uh, define when this output is fair. Okay. And um, I will use uh, it's it's not shown very well in the slides, but I will use uh, y for the actual uh, output. Y hat for the estimated output and S when we have probabilistic classifiers. Okay, so let's now uh, see uh, what, when this classification output should be considered fair. There are, um, uh, the, there are statistical, the most uh, commonly used approaches are statistical approaches, and there are three kinds of statistical approaches. Uh, uh, there's base rate, which uses only the predicted output, accuracy, that also considers the actual output, and calibration, uh, which also uses the predicted probability. Okay, let's start with base, base rate. Okay, so um, base rate uh, um, approaches use the um, the probability of getting the favorable outcome, if you belong to the non-protected group, this blue probability here, and then the probability of getting a favorable outcome if you belong to the protected group, red probability. So the blue probability is the probability that you get the job if you are a red person, and the red probability is the probability that you get the job um, the estimated probability that you get the job 
if you are a red person. And uh, we can compare this probability, uh, the probability that you get a favorable out outcome if you are a blue person and the probability that you get a favorable outcome if you are a red person. Okay. A special case is when these two probabilities are equal. Okay, um, and this models equity. Members of each group have the same chance of getting the favorable outcome. And this is also sometimes called democratic, demographic, statistical parity, because it preserves the input ratio. Uh, the demographics of the individuals that are receiving a favorable outcome is the same as the demographics of the underlying population. But this, as I said, models equity, and uh, it um, ignores the actual output. Um, the classification may be fair, but it may not reflect the ground truth. So accuracy and um, calibration take a different view and require that the classifier works equally well in terms of prediction error for both groups. So they look at errors that the classifier ma uh, makes for the blue and the red group. Um, let's see what um, first about let's talk first about um, accuracy uh, um, okay uh, accuracy i uh, use the confusion matrix you see an example of the right um, of the slide right corner of the top uh, right corner of the slide uh, so they use the predicted output and the actual output and um, um, you can uh, think of uh, Making confusion matrix, a different confusion matrix for the blue group and a different confusion matrix for the, for the red group. For red group. Right. So, uh, and um, depending of which of false positive, true positive, and what combinations of these values they use, um, we have a, a, a large variety of accuracy metrics. I have one example in the slide where we consider the true positive rate for the non protected group and the true positive rate for the protected group. And intuitively, uh, the red probability is the probability that a qualified member of the red group gets the job, and the blue probability is uh, the probability that a qualified member of the blue group gets the job. Uh, when these two probabilities are equal, we have what is called equal opportunity. Right? So the difference between accuracy and base rate is that accuracy actually looks at uh, whether uh, the applicants are qualified. It looks at the actual uh, output. Um, and then um, we have calibration. Calibration uh, is about probabilistic classifiers. Um, probabilistic classifiers also um, output the probability that an individual, individual belongs to a positive class. And uh, probability estimates are well, uh, are well calibrated. If the algorithm identifies a set of people of having a probability uh, p of, being, of belonging to the positive uh, class, then approximately p fraction of them um, are uh, truly uh, positive uh, instances. And uh, um, calibration-based definitions also ask that, uh, uh, intuitively ask that the classifier should be equally well calibrated for both groups. Okay, and this is expressed that um, a way to express is is that required for any predicted probability score, um, the probability of actually getting a favor uh, outcome is equally for the blue and the red group. OK, so um, I just wanted to uh, give a short overview uh, of some of the definitions uh, of fairness. There are many more uh, definitions. Um, and um, um, some uh, definitions are not even compatible. Uh, for example, some uh, uh, forms of accuracy-based definitions uh, cannot hold sim simultaneously with uh, calibration-based definitions. And of course, we have many, many more definitions um, um, for other tasks. So we, we, we discussed shortly about classification, but we get different definitions when we come, we talk about classification, we look at the output of a classifier, we look at the output of some ranking algorithm, we look at the output of clustering algorithm, 
for example, in ranking, um, fairness of exposure is very important. It, uh, that means that it's very important where the blue and the red uh, people appear in the ranking, their exact position. Um, and there are some tools that try to enforce and uh, uh, try to uh, evaluate these measures, um, but most of them um, basically look at uh, this kind of uh, statistical fairness. And um, of course, um, this is a, a, a specific view of fairness, right? There, what is fair is a very uh, difficult, a very broad question. Uh, and I'm going to show you a different aspect uh, uh, of fairness. Um, this is some work we have done uh, in the context of um, a fairness in packets to group recommenders. So I have just one slide about this work. Uh, what is a, a package to group recommenders? And we consider the case where we recommend a package of items to a group of people. For example, uh, courses to um, students, or um, um, points of interest for a tourist group, uh, or um, uh, movies to a set of groups. And here, um, we, want, we wanted uh, um, the people that are part of the group to feel that the output they get is fair for them. So they, the people in the group, um, I get, uh, I believe that the output is fair. Okay. And we um, define two different types of fairness. One we call fair, fairness proportionality, and the other we call NB fairness, um, getting some ideas for a fair division problem, a non-theoretical problem. So for fairness proportionality, um, a user considers that the items it gets are fair for her if there are at least a number of items that um, he, she really likes in this group. And for every freelance, um, a, a user considers that it's fair for her if there are at least M items for um, which uh, she does not feel envious about. Um, so this, um, this is another view of fairness that considers also the user, how the user feels about the items uh, it gets, about how the, the system treats him. Okay, so this was my short introduction, uh, my short discussion about fairness, and I'm going to talk a little bit about bias and what is bias and how bias relates to fairness. So again, bias is an overloaded term. Uh, this is the definition from uh, Oxford uh, Dictionary. Uh, bias is an inclination or prejudice for or against one person or group, or a concentration or interest in a particular area or subject. Um, and I think this is a kind of uh, nice uh, definition. Um, we, do, we can take, um, there are actually, when we talk about um, uh, information systems and algorithms, uh, I think there are two different types of, of bias, a statistical and a social uh, aspect. Um, so bias has been discussed, statistical bias has been um, being discussed for many years in the context of statistics. And uh, it basically uh, um, uh, refers to uh, sampling, how we choose data, and uh, uh, errors in measurements. So sampling bias is when the data set we select uh, as input to an algorithm is not representative of the full population uh, to which the algorithm will, uh, will be applied. And an interest, interesting case is the selective bias, um, because it, it is the case when the observed outcome depends on the choice of input. And I have an example. Uh, say we take this, we, we want to uh, we, we take the case of uh, uh, courts, and um, um, the outcome of whether a defendant fails to return for a court appearance, um, we obe it's observed only for those defendants that are released on bail. So here we have selective la labels. Uh, our input is only uh, those that are uh, were released with um, on bail. Okay. Okay, and then uh, there is um, uh, selection bias, how we select the input. Okay. And this is very important. I mean, uh, how we select uh, the input um, is important um, with regards to, uh, to our algorithms. And uh, then the other kind of statistical bias is uh, systematic measurement errors, where the error of an algorithm is considered consistently larger for a specific group, which is much like uh, what we uh, called accuracy-based fairness previously. Um, Okay, so this is the statistical bias, biases. 
An important but a very important and difficult to handle kind of bias are social bias. Um, there are objectionable social structure, um, bi human bias, preferences um, that, uh, uh, that uh, do influence uh, the way we design, implement, uh, evaluate or use systems. And also some of them are also reflected in the data. An example is uh, our word embeddings. Uh, and um, word embeddings were shown to, um, to encode uh, such stereotypes. Um, a, known, a known such stereotype is the analogy that man is the computer, what uh, programmer, man is to computer programmer, uh, as a woman is to homemaker. So those stereotypes are encoded in the data we use and uh, also in how we build uh, and use uh, algorithms. And this is a very long list of bias, um, normative bias, functional bias, con cognitive bias, um, that, yeah, that influence the way we, we, we um, um, design algorithms. Okay, so um, uh, usually, uh, so what, what is the relation of bias and fairness? So uh, usually bias refers to data and people uh, involved in the process, um, and unfairness um, refers to algorithmic systems. And an important problem is um, 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 uh, bias uh, disparity. So um, what happens when an algorithm receives uh, biased uh, data? Um, what uh, happens in some cases is that um, the algorithm uh, receives biased data, produces more biased data. This data is given as input to the same or different algorithm. And this keeps, and this loops, and this feedback loop keeps um, 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 Augment, uh, increasing the bias. Okay. Um, we call it bias disparity. I think this is a very uh, important um, uh, topic. Um, we have some. We have looked at this kind of problems in two areas. Uh, one is in um, um, collaborative filter recommenders, and um, in this case, we um, uh, say we have two groups, uh, men and women. And we have um, uh, the items are also um, we, we also um, divide the items that are recommended in groups based based on the movie gen. And we wanted to see whether recommended increased bias or preference um, of a user group for a specific item group. For example, um, well, it's a stereotype, but uh, it also holds uh, that the women prefer romance movies more than. Um, uh, uh, action movies. And um, the question is, uh, do um, uh, recommenders um, increase this bias or preference? And um, in a preliminary study that we have performed, uh, we found out that uh, this is the case um, in many cases, this is the case uh, in many settings. So uh, such preference in, in some, some times they are, it, uh, um, they, they increase or exaggerate it. And we're also looking at uh, knowledge graphs. Um, knowledge graphs there are, um, includes, include um, stereotypes uh, similar to what we have seen in, in, uh, in word embeddings. And um, we wanted to see whether um, knowledge graph embeddings um, exaggerate the bias that exists in the knowledge graph. Um, and we have um, uh, some preliminary work on uh, looking on um, gender bias in occupations. And, um, so uh, we um, we use knowledge graph embeddings um, to uh, to do a prediction task, and we found that uh, there is a such uh, bias, and the, the bias in the data set was exaggerated. For example, uh, more um, women-oriented uh, uh, jobs were predicted for women than men-oriented uh, jobs uh, to to. to than men-oriented jobs, and this was um, uh, and this bias was uh, actually exaggerated. So um, this is, I think, a very uh, important uh, topic. Okay, um, and the last aspect of aspect of um, response in data management is diversity. Um, fairness and bias have uh, received a lot of, of attention in the area of. Um, um, responsibility, but I also think diversity uh, is an important topic. Diversity is not a new uh, concept, it's not as new as algorithmic fairness. Uh, it has been studied in information retrieval and recommendations, 
um, to address ambiguity, to cover to cover different uh, information intents of user who's increase in the web, avoid redundancy, um, increase user uh, engagement. But also diversity is important because um, the diverse perspectives improve uh, collective understanding and problem solving. And this is important, um, for example, in crowdsourcing, when we form teams to work together and as to society as a whole. And it's also an, an ethical dimension to diversity uh, in terms of inclusion. Uh, we want to everybody to be in, included. Right. Okay. So again, there are two different uh, views in diversity. Uh, one is a coverage-based view, and one is a dissimilarity-based view or a distance-based view. The coverage-based view uh, assumes that we have a set of predefined, uh, distinct categories, concepts, topics, uh, interpretation, opinions, and we want um, um, uh, our outputs to ref the output of an algorithm to reflect, to cover all uh, all these all, all these uh, concepts, all these categories, all opinions. Um, to, we want our algorithm to be inclusive, to include all different um, topics. Another aspect is distance or the similarity. So given items, um, we want to uh, select uh, different distance, distant, dissimilar items. And I have a, an example for this kind of um, um, diversity, these types of diversity. Um, let's see coverage. Uh, okay, so um, we, um, I'm, I'm, I'm posing the Curie Jaguar, and uh, there are many different uh, uh, different uh, answers. Okay, the different topics. So Jaguar is a car. Uh, Jaguar is an animal. Jaguar is a team, and uh, Jaguar is a guitar. So I want um, my result to cover all these aspects. Um, the as other aspect of diversity, um, I have an example from distance. So I'm looking for two bedroom apartments in London. Um, I want them to um, with a, 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 a limit on price, right? So on the left, you see um, a non-diverse result here. With the diversity we consider diversity in terms of location. So on the on the left, you see non-diverse result. On the right, you see a diverse result. So you get uh, uh, we get some uh, um, some apartments in West London as well. Okay. So uh, what is the uh, so what is the relation? How diversity relates to fairness? Um, diversity is more about being inclusive. Um, it's about variety of of representing everything. Um, and where are, whereas fairness uh, is more about uh, non-discrimination and lack of favoritism. So a uh, diverse output is not necessarily a fair one, and a fair output is not necessarily a diverse one. An interesting problem is uh, determining the, the conditions under which fairness leads to diversity, and diversity leads to fairness. And this is an, an open question. Um, what is also interesting is to um, as diversity and fairness as part of the same framework, which may allow us to optimize them at the same time and get solutions that are more efficient and better. And the more general uh, question is um, how are their overall objectives related? Um, does diversity um, of data lead to more fair and less biased algorithms? And decision ma making, um, and on the other side, uh, on the other side, does um, fairness um, as diversity um, increase user engagement and the satisfaction? Um, yeah, there are both things to questions to think about and work um, and work on. Okay. Um, and um, before uh, wrapping up my discussion on diversity, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit of, uh, about one more uh, way to um, uh, to measure diversity. Um, 
so based on um, our own uh, view of diversity. So um, we've, we've been working on diversity for quite a uh, long time now. Um, and um, uh, especially with my uh, PhD student, Marina Adrosu. And I just wanted to, um, to provide a, just yet another view of diversity, what we call disk diversity, that uh, combines both coverage and dissimilarity. And um, the idea here is, uh, say you have a set of items and uh, B, and you want to select the representative subset. Um, and you want to summarize the data, you want to uh, give the user an informative summary or a, represent a, a representative um, a subset of the entity. So instead of uh, asking, um, uh, putting a limit on the number of items that we present the user, we introduce the notion of a radius. Okay, so we want to select um, items uh, that, uh, such that there is at least one similar item in the selected group and uh, not two items that are uh, similar items. Um, there are no similar items in the select in the in, in the group in, in the in the set of items that we select. Okay, and this is the similarity. And the nice thing about this form of diversity is, is that it is adaptive. So if we uh, have a smaller R, then we get more and less and dissimilar items. We call it zoom in. When we have a large R, we get less and more dissimilar items, and we call it zoom out. Okay, okay so um, again, um, um, we've been, as I said, working on diversity for a long time. We do have a short survey um, in Sigma record um, now 10 years ago. Years have passed 10 years ago, but we have, uh, and which is a, a more technical view on diversity, and we have a more recent uh, discussion review of uh, work in diversity that also takes uh, um, a more social aspect, because there are also social aspects uh, with Marina, uh, Jack, and uh, Julia. Okay, so um, this is uh, 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 so I have been uh, talking about fairness, lack of bias and diversity, and have discussed the different uh, ways of uh, 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 defining them and how these three concepts relate to each other. Now I'm going for to, 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 to discuss a little bit how these um, issues manif manif manifest themselves in social networks. As I said, we live in, an, in, uh, in a connected uh, work, a world, um, and um, uh, in, in, um, in practice, um, and I'm going to focus on uh, social networks. Okay. So um, social networks are not random. Okay. So people do not randomly connect with others in, in a social network. Um, and, and, there is homophily, um, and which means that uh, users in social networks um, are similar to their neighbors. And uh, homophily is caused by two um, related social forces. One selection, uh, people seek out similar people to interact with, and also social influence. Um, people became similar to those they interact with. Okay. Um, so uh, we don't just randomly connect with others. We prefer to go to connect with people that are similar to us, or um, as time passes by, we become similar to those we are connected with. There, is, there are also in many social networks there are there is also group size imbalance. Okay, for example, in collaborative collaboration networks, uh, take TBLP. Um, there is the, there is a minority, especially um, publications in uh, computer science. Uh, there is there is there are women are minorities, okay. and also there is what we call um, our lower degree in distribution, um, which means that not all uh, people in a network are equal. Um, uh, some people have more connections than others. Uh, we have influencers, right? Um, so nobody is equal. No, no one is equal. So these um, three factors: homophily, imbalance in the sizes, and also uh, this uh, preferential attachment, the uh, or low degree distribution, uh, um, may create create um, 
um, issues with diversity and, 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 and fairness. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about diversity first. And um, um, homophily and uh, also mainly to this lack of diversity which is caused by homophily um, may uh, uh, result in a number of not so favorable uh, phenomena. Um, you have you have heard about filter bubbles, where people became separated uh, from information that disagrees with their own viewpoints. Echo chambers, where um, ideas are reinforced by communicating and, rep and rep communication and repetition between uh, inside a defined system. Well, we can also have polarization, where the blue and the red uh, group, uh, the blue nodes talk to the blue nodes and the red nodes to the red nodes, but uh, blue nodes never talk, uh, sensibly talk with the red nodes. And uh, um, this may lead to, to, to various problems. Uh, one um, is exposure. Uh, I have a, a, a plot here of, um, y y that um, I kind of tries to estimate exposure to different points of view. Uh, it's from a study from Facebook. So uh, on the X, on the Y axis, you have the expo. Uh, okay, first let me say that we have uh, de Democrats and uh, liberals, and um, uh, the X ax axis. Um, um, talks about uh, exposure to the different side. How, how, how many uh, how many red opinions are heard by blue people, and how many uh, blue opinions are heard by the red group, right? And uh, the here the x axis are different points, uh, different ty ty kinds of uh, um, networks. The first one is uh, the first point is when we are in a completely random network. The first one is when we have based Facebook, but we don't uh, hear information from, from our friends, but we hear news from everyone in Facebook. Then uh, the last one is when uh, uh, um, the, the third one is when what, is, what our friends say, and uh, the last one is what we And you see that um, um, like, like diversity of exposure um, is gets smaller uh, from from this as we uh, focus on a more uh, uh, a small group, smaller group. Right? So my point is that um, in, in social networks um, there is lack of diversity, and this lack of diversity may lead to um, a different kind of a number of different problems. Okay. Now, what about uh, fairness? So again, if we think that if we consider blue and uh, red uh, nodes, male and female in the social network, um, uh, is, uh, uh, is is our uh, network algorithms fair? For example, what about the network embeddings? Uh, what about link recommendation algorithms? Um, okay, so um, there is a lot. There is some work. Um, uh, so this is a, a topic that is getting uh, some attention late, lately. Um, and um, I'm going to just briefly present um, a recent work, uh, current work, uh, current work on 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 on, uh, on this area. Okay, uh, our focus is on uh, centrality measures, um, and um, we wanted to 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 see um, what is a centrality measure. Centrality measures in general are measures that uh, um, say which are the important nodes in 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 in, in a Okay. So the simplest one is degree. So um, uh, people that have a high degree, that have a lot of followers, are uh, are uh, important nodes, right? And we wanted to see uh, how um, uh, how uh, degrees um, and other centrality measures um, are, uh, how how the, do they look? Which are the important people uh, in, in in a network in terms of uh, fair? Um, okay. So uh, there has been previous research that has looks look on degree, and um, uh, and previous research has shown that uh, the way uh, social networks are built, uh, minorities are hindered from equal representation. Right, um, and uh, we we are currently looking at page rank. I guess most of you are familiar with page rank. Uh, I have just one slide. Uh, Okay, which describes page rank. Okay, 
So uh, PageRank is a very well-known algorithm. It was used by Google, uh, and the idea is that uh, um, it, it, you are important if uh, other important uh, nodes follow you. Okay. So it does, it is not only the number of followers you have, but also the quality of the followers you have. Uh, okay, so. Um, the idea, um, uh, so the, the idea of page rank is that you have a uh, page rank quantity that is distributed among the nodes in the network. Each node distributes its own page rank to its neighbors, and the page rank of the node is the sum of the fraction it collects from its name. And this uh, somehow uh, model defines a random walk on the graph. You start from a node, you, uh, you move randomly, choose one of your network and move, move to that neighbor, and you pick one of of, of an outgoing edge uniformly at random, uh, and you do that, you repeatedly move around the network like that. You randomly choose a net, uh, neighbor, you move there, you randomly choose a new neighbor, and so on. Okay? And there is a a, 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 an extension of the random walk, which is called random walk with jumps, uh, which means that you do this random walk, but uh, with probability A, you a coin and you jump to a different uh, node. And then an, an interesting variation of uh, page rank is personalized page rank. So in this case, every node uh, ranks the other nodes. So um, in this case, you do some kind of uh, rooted page rank. So instead of randomly choosing a node and moving around, you start from the specific node um, and you jump back to that node. And personalized page rank, um, the ranking produced by the personalized page rank is actually um, an indication of uh, similarity. Um, so of your neighbors are more similar to you, and then is an, an indication of exposure, right? um, which um, which, which, which uh, nodes are closer to you. Okay. So um, in this study, what we wanted to do is we wanted to define the fairness of page rank. And we took a ratio-based approach. So um, here, um, we, we the red uh, sum is the sum of the page rank of the red nodes, and the blue sum is the sum of uh, the page rank of the blue nodes. And uh, we wanted um, uh, blue and red nodes to take a fair um, um, sum of the page rank. And we actually counted it for a variety of networks. In the, in the figure, I have uh, three. Um, four different networks. Um, R is the percentage of red nodes. Page, uh, PR is the percentage, the sum of the uh, page rank they get. In some network, uh, some networks are fair, some networks are less fair. For example, uh, in DBLP, uh, we have only 70% of women, uh, and the and, and page rank is quite fair. We get 16%, we get 16% of page rank. So the idea here is, um, can we increase the page rank that the minority group uh, 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 gets? Just to look at the, uh, the personalized page rank. So the plot shows the personalized page rank, the red personalized page rank for blue and red nodes, and um, uh, and we plot the red personalized page rank, which actually the uh, the page rank that uh, blue and red nodes give to red nodes. And we see that most blue nodes give a small portion of their pair page rank to red nodes in some networks, and um, red nodes to red nodes. Uh, give a, a large percentage of the red page rank to red nodes. This is an indication of homophily. And what we wanted to do is uh, to give an equal view uh, to all nodes. So um, all nodes have um, um, fair personalized page rank. Uh, okay, so we uh, we uh, try to look at different uh, ways of uh, changing um, page rank so that page rank is fair in both in um, in a global way, the global page rank, but also at the local way, the, the personalized page rank of all nodes is, is is fair. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about much about this, and okay. so this doesn't say much, but the idea here is that if you are a node and you have three. Uh, neighbors and just one red, um, page rank gives three, fourth, three uh, fourths of your page rank to blue nodes and just one for one 
over 4 to the red one. And um, we, we say what if we make every node fair? So every node gives the same amount of page run to blue nodes and red nodes. So here uh, I give 1 over 2 to the red node and the remaining to the blue node. Okay. Um, and this is kind of a fair behavior for nodes. It's a fair local behavior for nodes. And we have somehow, and we have also extended this idea where instead of giving this extra quantity to the red nodes, still, um, we give it, we call it residual and we just distribute it to red nodes in the graph. And we have some very interesting results. First, that if every node is local, then we get global fairness. And not, uh, and the other interesting um, result we, we, we have is that uh, this fair behavior, this local fair behavior, is the only algorithm that uh, results in all personalized page rank being fair. Okay. As I said, this is ongoing research. We have uh, a preliminary version uh, as uh, uh, preprint, and uh, a much improved version, uh, version is now at the place. Okay, so to sum it up, uh, there are many open problems in networks, um, um, how in terms of recommendation, embeddings, influence propagation, opinion models. Uh, so a lot of uh, interesting problems to work on. So to summarize, um, I've been talking about fairness, lack of bias, diversity. And in the last part of the talk, I have uh, shown how these issues uh, manifest themselves in social media. Um, I've been talking mainly about definitions and frameworks, but of course, uh, there are algorithms to enforce these definitions. Um, how to processing algorithms that change the data, in processing algorithms that change the algorithms, and post processing algorithms that change the algorithms. Okay, so uh, to conclude, this is really a vibrant community, a lot of work. Um, it's an, actually, it's a landscape at the development. It's a hard topic because it involves uh, philosophical, legal, uh, sometimes controversial notice of notions of justice and um, social good. But on a positive note, uh, research-wise, there are a lot of open problems to work uh, on, and um, those problems have the potential to make an impact. So a great data to work.